Hey, it's Adam here, co-founder of Enter Solutions, and this is another end episode of Enter Wonders. Today we are wondering about Drive by Daniel H. Pink. Uh, this is a great book. It gave me so many cool ideas. It's basically about extrinsic versus intrinsic motivation. So extrinsic, meaning carrots and sticks. Um, he, in here, he calls it motivation 2.0. And this is basically how business for the last, how, you know, however so many centuries has been done, right? If I give you more money, you will work harder, right? If I give you less money, you won't work less as hard. Or the stick, right? I will punish you. I will fire you if you don't get, you know, get moving. But uh, recently, starting in the 70s, there was all this research um, about how people respond differently to this extrinsic motivation versus intrinsic, which is like comes from in. I do it because I'm passionate about it because I love it. Um, so there's this one study that's really cool, and I, I think I brought it up before in another book, is they invite people into a room. There is a box, like a, like a box without a top, and there is some wax, some matches, and a candle. And the task is to attach the candle to the, or suspend the, the candle, um, to attach the candle to the wall. And so they do a baseline, people do it, it takes them a certain amount to figure it out. The answer is you, you take the box, you put it like this, you use the wax to stick the edge of the box in, and then you put the candle on top of the, top of the box. So you gotta be a little bit creative. So um, then, they, then they said, okay, well, let's give people an incentive. They say, hey, if you are in the top, you know, 10% will give you 20 bucks if you do it. Um, so they offer people $20 if their time was in the best 10% of all the people studied. And guess what happened? They were shocked because their time actually went down. People did worse. They, they, were, they, they did not respond to a carrot or an extrinsic motivator um, in that way. Um, what they did do though, is when they come into the room, they have the box and they have all the stuff in it. So then they took everything out of the box and put the box beside it. And then people's times went up. So it was less creative. You walk in and the box becomes one of the materials, right? The trick is to recognize the box as something you can use and you don't do that to take everything out of the box. So what that was an indication was that our whole way of doing business, this whole motivation 2.0, this carrot and stick um, is wrong. People actually, don't respond well to that. Um, so here's some points about carrots and sticks. So he calls them the seven deadly flaws. So uh, it can extinguish your um, extrinsic motivation. And there's a really cool example here with daycare. So uh, if maybe you take your kids to daycare, sometimes if you're late for every minute you're late, they will charge you like five bucks or something. Um, so they actually did a study with a daycare that had no penalties for being late. And they have a certain percentage of people every month that would be late. Um, so they said, okay, we're gonna add this incentive. We're gonna charge you five bucks for every time you're late. And what happened? You think it went up or you think it went down? Actually it went up. It had the opposite effect of what the researchers thought. And here's what happened. By adding in a fine or a, a fee for being late, you reduced it to a transaction that the person can decide they're willing to pay. So me feeling bad about being late and affecting the caregiver is a much more powerful motivator than me saying, ah, it's five bucks, I'm not gonna work so hard. So this is really, really interesting. It can, it can actually stamp out that intrinsic desire to, um, to help or to, or to do things. Um, it diminishes performance, uh, crushes creativity, crowd out good behavior, encourage cheating shortcuts, unethical behavior, uh, this is a cool example of um, commission structures. And if you work off commission, and lots of times commission is based off a time period. So if you know you've reached, you know, the amount of money you want to make in a time period, uh, what people will do is actually prolong the next sales to push you into the next time period to bank against getting that same commission the next month. So you see how people, it's not that people are trying to cheat the system, it's just that it's driving behaviors that are not um, necessarily in the best interest of what's going on. Uh, it can become addictive and it can foster short-term
long-term thinking. So you're, you're you're more worried about the the carrot than you are about the you know the success of the business, for example. So there are times when extrinsic rewards can work well. There's kind of two rules. One, make it unexpected. So if someone completes something and does something amazing, you know, give them that 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 gift card or praise or whatever so unexpected however be careful because this um i like a now if an if then reward kind of can now become a now what reward meaning now it's expected if you reward people every time with gift cards now all of a sudden they expect gift cards so they can turn around you really fast um and the other thing is extrinsic extrinsic rewards only work well for very mundane tasks very repetitive data entry task where you don't have to be creative where you don't have to think you don't you just kind of like it will an extrinsic reward will cause you to just go faster um but that's it for for that so uh there's also so how does this affect business how does this affect going from motivation 2.0 as daniel talks about to motivation 3.0 in business um there's there's a bunch of cool ideas like policies for example and you know, as, as a management consultant, this is where we see this all the time is people like over politicize. So if you reduce a policy to a checklist, now you've made it transactional. Now you're the daycare. So now you've created a situation where people are actually responding. They're losing their intrinsic motivation to do the best thing for the business because they're good people. Now it's a transaction. Oh, I just have to come do the checklist. That's it. Um, so be very, very careful with your policies and how you write them. Um, we always, when we write policies, try and pepper them with, this is why we're doing it. We believe this. So this is the guidelines. Like, um, anyway, that's a whole nother discussion. Uh, another cool idea, do it yourself performance reviews. So the idea is basically your employees set their own goals for the month or two months or three months or whatever. And then at the end of that, they evaluate themselves and then they meet with their supervisors or coach or mentor or whoever and talk about it. So um, it really pulls that intrinsic motivation out. You evaluate yourself. I actually really like this one. I can see us as we grow um, enacting something like that. Um, FedEx Days is a software company at Atlassian um, started this. And the idea is you have to deliver something in one day. So once a quarter, the whole company gets an entire day to cancel the meetings, close the doors, unplug the phone, and you're allowed to work on whatever you want. But the next day, they have a big show and tell and a big party, and it has become an absolute um, huge success story for them. Like people will work all night and make leaps and bounds in a single day. And I actually just today scheduled our first, I called it an intubation day, for the end of March. So I'm super excited to see how that goes with my small little team. So um, another one, peer-to-peer -peer rewards. Uh, you create a kudos system. Caitlin, my business partner, actually created this uh, at one of the companies we used to work for. Um, but allow peers to give rewards, like a $50 gift card to each other, right? It's not the boss saying, if you do this, you do that. It's your peers saying, hey, that was an awesome job. Here you go. And the company backs it up. So peer-to-peer -peer is a little different than the boss to the, um, and then lastly, kind of to sum it up, um, it says animate with purpose, don't motivate with rewards. And I really like that, right? Like that the idea of having this purpose. And you know, when you're designing things, things, I thought this was really cool. This is, like, this is the last thing. We design rules in an organization. We design for the 15%. And what that means is 85% of people will not try and game the system. They will do the right thing. They will show up on time, whatever, right? A small percentage will cheat, will break the rules, will, will just not do the right thing. So we would create all these rules and all these backups to like fight that 15%. Plan and implement for the 85%. The 15%, so be it. They, they won't last long in a culture like that anyways. So I love that rule. Plan for the 85%. That's another one. My monitor is going to be 
covered with all these sticky notes pretty soon. But there you go. I trust people. And that is Drive by Daniel Pink. Hope you enjoyed it.